Hi, in this video, we will have a look at Microsoft Power Automate Community Thread. The question here is how to save EML, EML files as PDF with attachments. Okay, so what is an EML file? So EML files usually contain emails with text, images, and attachments. So if you open your Outlook and if you save that message, the extension will be .eml. So that means that file contains the email message and then the attachments as well. So here, what we're looking here is how to read an EML file, file and uh, you know, store that as a PDF. I'm not going to cover the PDF part here, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you here how to extract the EML file message and the attachments, okay? So in Power Automate, there is no out of the box connector for this. Um, of course, you can read using the Outlook connector, uh, but if you got a bunch of EML files, I think it looks like that's the case here, uh, have lots of EML files, you want to save them as PDF with attachments, okay? Um, so, um, if you have a uh, lots of EML files lying in your uh, somewhere in your drive, um, you know I will demonstrate here how to read those files, get the contents and the attachments. So, like I mentioned, nothing in Power Automate, so we need to do an API for for this. Uh, so, what I did here is I got Visual Studio and I you I use the GitHub Copilot to generate this code. Okay, it's fairly straightforward it is. My requirement uh, to the GitHub Copilot is, you know, I need an API method called EML parser and parse, parse is my method in that, yeah. And uh, then passing the uh, body, and the body which contains um, the, I'll show you the body uh, which will contain the file name and the base64 content. So basically the email, uh, you know, that is, uh, you know, your email, uh, the file, that is the .eml file. And when you read that content, uh, you know, the whole file, uh, that is the base64 content we need to pass to the API. So um, what I did uh, here is um, I have an API method, API eml parser dot pass. Then, uh, you know, fairly st straightforward, converting to bytes, then uh, memory stream to read, uh, read it. Uh, then finally getting the attachments and also, uh, you know, uh, getting the file name and the base 64 content and that's in an array. You can see it's a two list that's converts into an array then. And then finally getting the from to subject and all this. Okay, so that's my API. Uh, so you got a couple of options here. Uh, you know, you need to find a provider to host this or you can locally host this, uh, host, uh, this API. What I did is uh, for the development purpose, um, I don't know whether you are aware of, there is a tool called um, uh, uh, ngrok. Uh, what you could do is uh, you could run this project just like that. And that means, uh, you know, my API is up and running. And um, uh, then you can go uh, download the ngrok file, ngrok exe, that's a, a tool. And uh, what then you need to run using the HTTP, uh, yes, or HTTP. So um, my, uh, you know, the uh, the API here, the code it runs under HTTPS now. Um, you can see, uh, you know, I am running using using this ngrok HTTPS. You don't need to put HTTP there. HTTPS colon slash slash uh, localhost 5001. Uh, what are the you know what are the this is an example but what are you know your port is you need to put it that way so I'll just show you that here how it's running so here if you look you can see you know i type my minus minus 7190 that's where the local host is you know uh, like i mentioned you can provide a provide uh, find a provider or an azure or somewhere else uh, you can host your api uh, then uh, you know you should be able to access as a public url so if you don't want to go through that route uh, just to test quickly, then you know I always use ngrok to test it, and then eventually you will get this is the my public URL. Then so here we go, that's my public URL. Okay. Then what I did is once I uh, you know once I published this, uh, this, this service is up and running. Uh, then I went to the custom connector, and uh, what I did there is I use HTTPS. Then my the ngrok given me this URL. Remember, I just shown you that. Uh, 
uh, this URL here, that's my host 9321, not the local host, remember. So NGROC will publish as a you know public one, and uh, that's the one. Then my method, uh, you know, the base URL is slash API email parser. Um, that's my method. Uh, you can see like my uh, app map post my you know that's a base url and pass is my method there okay and the next there's no securities i haven't put anything there if you want you can add that custom ones and um, then the next is the security nothing here then the definition so in the definition you know you put the standard summary and uh, this in the operation id uh, i made that as pass eml and then under the post i put the whole uh, that uh, url there and then the content type is uh, you know you, you don't you know i put the content type and accept that basically such application slash uh, json uh, that's all it is that and uh, then going back i don't think you really need that but i just put those two and in the body, uh, you know, it's a, a, a same thing. Uh, you know, I passed um, the the file name and uh, the uh, basically the JSON parameter as this. Uh, let me show you that file name and the base64 content. That that's my uh, body there. You know, um, let me go back here under the definition yeah that's here so you can click on import example here you know you can put post uh, put the url then in the body you know that's what i put i put curly brackets and then double quotes file name and the base 64 i just shown you earlier okay um, that's way i created my uh, custom connector okay so once i done the custom connector what i did then is i went to the power automate uh, when a file is created, uh, that's uh, my, uh, you know, a folder I create folder in my OneDrive. And that's, this is where I'm going to drop my .eml file. I'm finding the file identifier. Here we go. That's my custom connector then. And I put content type and accept is application slash JSON. Then the file name and the base64 content. This is the one, you know, I specified here. Remember. Uh, in my EML pass API, I got I got a file name and the base 64, and this is the one I generated in my custom connector as well. Under my import example, I put it here like that. Remember? Yeah, like this file name and uh, you know, uh, all you need is you need to put the same name here, like file name, and then you can put something there. It doesn't matter because it's a string value. Uh, then you put uh, the base uh, 64, uh, base 64 content. Uh, so you can put that here base 64 content also like that and again that's a string again so you can put something there click import that will generate it once you put the url that is this all that once you click import you will get this basically yeah you can add a default response if you want i have you know it's not necessary uh, if you want you can put it um, i'll show you another way of uh, capturing that in a minute so um, this is what um, uh, you know I did then I used the custom connector and uh, I put the file name coming from my trigger then I use base64 as the output of the get file uh, content of the body so this is quite important here first you get the file um, identifier to get the file content then convert this file content output to base64 very very important that is okay then uh, like I said if you don't you know use the default uh, uh, the the response from your connector you can just capture the capture the full body body of the pass eml file the previous step okay and then run your flow you'll get the schema then use the pass json and that will come up with the from message to message subject you know like the body text body uh, html all this comes up here attachments and all then uh, attachments is an array because you can have more than one attachments in your email okay then again uh, that attachments uh, because it's an array i we, we we have the file name and the base 64 content so i'm passing that as well uh, passing you know the attachments output here or you can directly map the attachment here also yeah and then under the compost three i'm just collecting those uh, you know there's a body text also there let me get that uh, body text i think yeah here we go body text 
then that means that means we are collect, collecting that uh, you know the email uh, content and then under the attachment i'm saying okay create uh, the file the attachment of the email the file name which we get from the attachment uh, you know the object here that is file name and the base 64 content so again we need to convert to base 64 to binary here for that okay to convert that into the file so um, now if i run this i already had the trigger earlier i'll show you how to run this again uh, let me go back and run yeah that's my it's running my service everything is running now and uh, I'm going to run this now. Let's see if it works or not. Okay, that's doing the passing job, pass EML file it is. That's what it's doing. And then, uh, you know, it should hopefully comes to the compost and do the job. okay flow ran successfully so here we go i got uh, you know the output of the eml file here and then uh, that's output if i click, click the output you can see my email and my blob here that is my attachment in my email and um, i'll show you here that i'm passing the pass json again under the compose output i'm getting uh, you know the i only got one attachment you can see that i got a pdf file and the base 64 content there and under the combos three uh, here we go i'm capturing the email details which you know the message and all um, you can convert this into html to text uh, you can you know there's an action step there you can convert if you want that and then uh, this is the attachment i'm doing the attachment uh, the create file and that is slash demo then that file uh, you know it's it just created that so if i take you to my onedrive here you can see that's a yml file and um, i got the attachments under that you know um, that's basically it is you know uh, so overall uh, you know what we need here is we need an api to do the job um, so i wrote this in c sharp uh, you know you can write what language you want as long as you know it is published and accessible by the uh, the the power platform custom connector uh, you know um, so once it's published, then, uh, you know, you can go to the connector and um, custom connector and, um, you know, you can create the custom connector and uh, then, uh, you know, utilize in your uh, flow to um, read the YAML file, create the attachment. What I will do is I will put this code in my GitHub repo. So if you want to use it, uh, feel free to use it. And um, uh, also, if anybody wants, uh, you know, this detailed step, anything please let me know i can you know send you as a zip file or i might uh, do this into my github as well let's see um yeah there are some complications there i think with the connectors and all i'm not really sure how the custom connector is probably not going to be the straightforward to deploy it unless i create that is a solution i think um yeah I'm, I'm, i will see that um yeah so i thought you know this is an interesting question how to save eml files as pdf uh, you know this so this is one way of uh, doing it uh, there might be you know there are other tools out there might be manu manually labeled job that is you know you need to like here it's specified that uh, there is a uh, you know tool here converter uh, but this way you know you can fully automate it using power automate uh, that's a uh, uh, power of using the power platform um, you know, it's a great tool for automation, um, especially the Power Automate side. It got lots of connectors. Hope this is useful. Thank you for watching.